Around this time, Richard Owen started arguing that the horn that Mantell had put on the animal's nose was actually an ungual, a fingertip bone. He didn't put it confidently on the thumb. He concluded that it was probably an outer digit, so either a thumb or a pinky, in our terms. Owen's argument was that the base of the spike had an articular surface, which you wouldn't expect to find on something that was attached to the nose of the animal whereas a thumb has to be able to rotate, even though Iguanodon specifically couldn't move very far. It seems to have moved as a unit with the first knuckle of the thumb as well. Now, Mantell argued that it couldn't be an ungule. He thought that it was either a nose horn or one of a series of dorsal spines down the animal's back, sort of like what we were envisioning for Hylaeosaurus at the time. And funnily enough, his argument in favor of that is because the thumb spike that he had was not like this one. His didn't have these furrows down either side, which is where the quick, I, I don't know the technical term for it, the, the part of the claw where it grows in, that's where the nutrients for that are. Individual iguanodon might lack those furrows for whatever reason. It's really inconsistent. Sometimes they'll have a furrow on one side and not on the other. Sometimes they'll have furrows on their left thumb and not on their right thumb. It's extremely variable. So it's just bad luck on Mantell's part that he got one that didn't look like an ungule. <laughs> But what was the thumb spike for? Poole did a finite element analysis of the wrist bones and found that the way that the wrist bones are fused is really good for bearing stabby stresses. It's, it's good for driving the thumb spike into things. Her analysis didn't include things like, is it good at bearing stresses this way? So further research required on that one. But that same individual variation paper, Verdu et al, found that there are two distinct morphs of thumb spike. Some, relative to the size of the base of the spike, have a very short spike, and some have a very long spike. And whenever you have two morphs of an animal, workers kind of want that to be sexual dimorphism. But in this case, it kind of makes sense because maybe the males were competing for mates and they had their thumb spikes either as deterrent, you know, as just a display, or like how roosters will have spurs and they fought each other. It's not an unreasonable conclusion. Talk dumb, get the thumb. You don't have to leave that one in. <laughs>